So how did the early Doctor Who episodes even go missing? How could the BBC let such a thing happen? Well, strap yourselves in and get ready for a wild and complicated ride into the 1960s, because all that and more is coming up. The best box set that you can buy for Doctor Who Hey guys, welcome to the Doctor Who Guide, helping you expand your knowledge, your collection, and your connection with other Doctor Who fans. Here on this channel, we post video guides, reviews, tips and tricks for expanding your collection. If you want to see more content like this, definitely subscribe. The missing episodes. How did they go missing? Well, there's quite a lot that goes into that question. We're going to have to look at the BBC during the 1960s. It's the British Broadcasting Corporation. It's in the business of creating and selling programs to other broadcasters around the world. The BBC is run like a business. If something isn't deemed to be commercially valuable, it's not going to last for long. Back in the late 50s and early 60s, many programs, including Doctor Who, were filmed on 2-inch videotape, which was easy to use and lasted long, and then copied onto 16mm film reels. This was because film was universal, whereas videotape was not. They could create a program and then send it out to the world to be broadcasted. Now we've also got to understand not only the BBC and its company process, but also the prevailing attitude towards television. Back then, television shows aired once, maybe twice, and then that was it. There was no more use. They didn't have DVDs or VHSs to release their programs on afterwards. Actors unions like Equity basically made it so that the BBC didn't have the right to air a program more than two or three times. After that, it would become very expensive and really not worthwhile for the BBC to air a program. Equity did this because they preferred to have the actors rehired and have the whole program reshot so that the actors could get paid for making it again. So basically, there was no use for these reels ever again. Once they were made, they were then stored. So this resulted in a ton of film reels stacking up and creating storage issues, and this problem had to be solved. It was solved by either taking a reel, wiping it clean, or melting it down, or physically burning it, or re-recording over a story. This process was very haphazard. It didn't matter as long as they were making space. There was no rhyme or reason to this madness. It would make room for newer products that were deemed more commercially valuable especially stuff like color TV. Black and white was going out the window, and so was 1960s Who. We're going to take a look at the process that happened to a Doctor Who episode once it was filmed. It was filmed on 2-inch videotape. It was copied onto 16mm film reels. Now, the videotapes, they were the responsibility of the BBC engineering department. They took care of those master reels from which all other copies were made. The film copies were the responsibility of the BBC Film Library. However, there was also the marketing branch of the BBC, known as BBC Enterprises, now known as BBC Worldwide, and they were in charge of making their own copies and selling those film copies to broadcasting stations around the world. So BBC Enterprises would tell the engineering department what they could destroy, and the engineering department went at it with a vigor, destroying episodes of Doctor Who as early as 1967, including Doctor Who the Highlanders. This was the first Doctor Who reel to ever be destroyed, and it was destroyed only a mere two months after airing. So by the end of the early 70s in 1972, the engineering department no longer had any master copies of any of the 253 episodes of 1960s Who. Good job, engineering department. They, of course, presumed that the film library was in charge of all the archival responsibility and keeping copies of the episodes existing. Well, the film library thought that the engineering department had archival responsibility, and there were debates back and forth about who actually had the responsibility. Both departments couldn't even keep track of their own inventory, never mind keep track of the other's inventory. So the engineering department destroyed all of the master copies, thinking that the film library had their own copies. Which was true. Uh, their copies lasted much longer uh, into the early 70s, but from 1972 to 1978, the film library was also instructed to make room and make space by destroying their own copies of their film reels. So this mayhem continued all the way till 1978. It was only until Ian Levine, a record producer and fan of the show, intervened that the junkings stopped. By the end of the junkings in 1978, 
The engineering department had nothing whatsoever of Doctor Who, and the BBC Film Library held only 47 out of the 253 original 1960s episodes of Doctor Who. Only 47 episodes. Things were looking pretty bad.